Greetings, fellow humans. I am Dr. Jones. This is Wyatt. Wyatt has a lot of bones, so we're going to divide all his bones into four videos. Enjoy all of them. Wyatt, really? We're doing a show today, and you're the star, and you're goofing off, pretending you're in Cirque du Soleil. Now I gotta put your arm back in. How? What were you thinking? Greetings, fellow humans. I'm Dr. Jones. We are going to talk today about Wyatt's skeleton. That's all he is anyways. He's just a skeleton. We have a rib cage, which protects nicely the heart and the lungs. And there are 12 ribs. They are attached in the front to the breastbone, which is called the sternum. And the ribs are attached in the back to the 12 thoracic vertebrae. You can feel your rib cage by basically hooking your fingers here and you'll feel the, the bottom of the rib cage. And you can, of course, feel the sternum right here in the middle of your chest. Now let's move on to some other bones. The collarbone is where the collar of a shirt would be. And here it is right here, the collarbone, technically known as the clavicle. You can easily feel the collarbone yourself you can just pinch it with your fingers. You can feel it going all the way from your sternum, your breastbone, and moving out to the side. Mine has a bump on it here because I broke it in grade five when I was wrestling with a friend of mine who is obviously superior to me. <laughs> okay, that's the clavicle. And the bone at the back here, this is the shoulder blade. Does it have a technical name? Of course it does. Let's look a little bit carefully at the scapula. There are screws here holding it into these ribs on this model. That is not the case in real life. The scapula is actually free to move and it is what allows, it's part of what allows our arm to have lots of motion. So this whole thing, and you can see it kind of looks like a blade. Now that we know about the scapula, let's talk about the arm. This is, this entire thing is the arm, the left arm. The upper bone in the arm is called the humerus. The humerus is able to move very freely, which is why we can swim and we can do, we make speeches. <laughs> and there are, basically everybody's probably heard of what's called the rotator cuff. There are four muscles that actually attach the uh, humerus to the scapula and people can have all kinds of rotator cuff tears. I'm not gonna get into it, but this is what attaches the arm to the scapula so that it doesn't just float away into space. So that's the humerus. Moving on to the forearm, there are two bones in the forearm. The one on the inside is called the ulna and the one on the outside is called the radius. Now, let's make an important distinction here about how we name things in medicine. When someone stands like this with their palms like this, this is called the anatomical position. Anybody standing like this. So here's Wyatt's ulna and here is his radius. These are the two bones of the forearm. There is no such thing as the elbow bone. There's an elbow joint that's formed between the humerus and the radius and the ulna. It's a big inclusive term. And the ulna, just focusing on it for a second at the upper edge, has a really interesting design where it actually looks a bit like a wrench. And this is the portion I want you to focus on right here. So here's a wrench. And note the similarity of the wrench and the ulna. So this upper portion of the ulna actually grasps the lower portion of the humerus here, kind of like a wrench. And when you feel your elbow right here, you're feeling this right here, which is actually called the olecranon process of the ulna. Just know that it's part of the ulna and it has a wrench shape this whole area here so that's your ulna have you ever opened a door with the doorknob there's a fundamental movement of the hands this motion here going in coming back this is fundamental 
to how everything we do and our forearm bones, as you'll learn in a second, are critical to this motion. So when we're in the anatomical position and our hands are like this, the hand in this position with the palm up is called supination. And you can remember this like there's a bowl of soup in the hand and this is supination. And the forearm is exactly like this. When you turn it over with the palm going down, like you're turning a doorknob and the bowl of soup is getting turned over, that is called pronation. And the arm is turning over like this. Notice what happened. It's a pretty incredible movement. The radius actually crosses over the ulna in order to accomplish pronation. The eight bones of the wrist are technically known as the carpal bones. On the back of the hand are these long bones that are called the metacarpals. And I'm just gonna lay this right here. <laughs> so these are the metacarpals. They're the, the these long bones. They have, uh, they're the numbered uh, one, two, three, four, and five. And interestingly, there is a phenomenon known as a boxer's fracture. If, and it's usually a young male who got angry. He punched a locker or a wall and he fractures the fifth metacarpal right here, called a boxer's fracture. And it doesn't usually happen to boxers themselves because they're wearing boxing gloves. So sometimes they call this the brawler's fracture, like in Britain maybe, but it's called, it's the boxer's fracture. As you can see, we have five fingers and each finger is made of three bones, except the thumb, which is just made of two bones. Okay, so that's basically it for the arm. Thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, share, notify, all that stuff. Catch you for the next time. <laughs> We're all good? Oh yeah. We're rolling on both? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And that's an interesting. Uh,